Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel, Kono Pro. You see what I'm pointing at right there? This is one of my clients' house. This is one of his properties, and he had me come through to do some uh, repair work on that gate right there because the firemen during the Calabasas Mahalan fire had to uh, have access to that little that little area behind this house that caught on fire to put it out. Thank God they put it out and it didn't burn down these beautiful homes here and get into this little sub-development. That brings me to what this video is about. Today, this is a serious video. Today we're going to go over a couple tips on how to protect your home from wildfires, okay? First tip is keep all vegetation or any flammable items away from your property. It's really important that you you know, maintain a good 20 feet away from your house, even even further if you'd like, away from your home. Don't let trees hang and touch your house and your roofs. You know, and you see right here, it's all clear back there. The property owner told me, said that they keep this area all clear of vegetation um, to basically have a fire break before anything gets to the properties. And that was, that's awesome because that's what probably saved their structures right here okay we've been in years of drought in California and unfortunately there's a lot of areas that are really really dry okay and it's not leaves on the floor but it's just trees that are dry like I've seen trees break because of this drought you see that wood fence that is a flammable fence so if you had bushes going right up to it it probably would have caught on fire thank goodness they had that setback there was a little tiny fire that caught there and it got put out by the firemen thank goodness for them and for their bravery, and we appreciate all the firemen and women out there that help save all these structures and fires and continue to do for us all. We appreciate you. But you see how close that was. I mean, we're talking 50, 75 feet from the property right there. So that's my first tip. Maintain a clear area around your property where there's nothing flammable that can catch on fire, okay? At least make it a lot harder for flames to travel up and then touch your property line or your house all right you see here how they have that clear path area boom so they 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 help with that my second tip my second tip is building codes all right there are zones in certain areas that people live in like right here this is probably a high fire zoned area so if i were to go in there and build a house right now they'd make me build it per different fire codes Okay, and everything would be drawn up on the plans and would be provided for me and I would build it for the new fire codes because codes are up, you know, upgraded all the time. Um, and this is a high fire area. So if you have an old structure that's built before the fire codes were, um, you know, in implemented, then you might have a home that's more susceptible to fires than a home that's more modern and that's built with fire coded stuff. Okay, and what I mean by fire codes I mean by a, a fire rated roof so if an ember lands on it it won't catch the roof on fire really quick um, back in the day they used to have California shake roofs all California had shake roofs which is like a wood a cedar shake roof and that will catch on fire really quick they made that illegal really fast and there's other fire um, fire rated material that you can put on your roof to help protect your roof and then there's eaves a lot of times when the wind is blowing and there's an uh, ember that gets caught in the air it will spread from structure to structure because of the eaves if you have a gable on your house and you have an overhang the eaves will catch up in that overhang and then the wind will create a little vortex and it'll spin in the eaves and then the ember will just get stuck right up to right onto the eave and then it'll just the wind will keep igniting igniting it and the light on fire next thing you know it's in your attic crawling up the roof your whole house is gone and then it'll jump to the next house it won't even burn the grass it won't burn the trees around it it just because that's all green it'll just jump from house to house to house all right so there's a thing you can do you can upgrade your home it may be expensive but you can upgrade your pop property per fire codes in your area you can have a contractor come out an architect an engineer come out they can go over everything with you that you can do to your house to help be proactive and help protect your home from fires i recommend you do this please if you love your home it's your dream home or it's just your property investment whatever it is please go try to upgrade your house as best you can per fire codes especially if you're in a high fire zone area all right and lately in california it seems like that's everywhere 
It's been so dry and there's been so many fires. Okay, so now we're gonna take a cruise that we got those two major points over with. Those are my main points. We're gonna take a cruise through Mulholland, right? Calabasas area. You see that vinyl fencing right there? Done, melted. If that was a concrete brick wall, it would have been there still. See that? There was a, there was a house. There was a house. Um, I like to say rest in peace. That house is gone. And, you know, it's, it's a shame, but you can see all the trees around it. And a lot of people like to have all the trees around their house because of insulation and things like that. And that's not so bad if your home was built per fire codes. And you got, you know, all these different things in your house to help, you know, so your house won't catch on fire. See that vinyl fence right there? Boom. Gone. Just melted. Like I say, if that was... I don't know how good wood would have stood up to that flame right there, but I know brick would have stood up, you know, to that, to those flames. So there's different things you can do to maintain your structure being safe. So right here, I was cruising through Mulholland, and then I saw these lines, there's a bunch of power lines down, and just melted, and you can tell the flames came racing up this hill. And like I say, I'm not a fire specialist. So you see right there all the trees completely burnt and gone, it looks like a wasteland, like a nuclear bomb dropped. It's really sad because this was a gorgeous view. And now it still has its beauty in some ways, but not like it was before. I mean, it was so green and beautiful, and there was a lot of dry, dry brush, but there was still a lot of green trees amongst them all. And now just look at it. There's a little patch of green down there in the valley, but besides that, all those mountains, that whole range, all of that is gone, just burnt down black charcoal you don't even want to walk around because there's so much ash that gets kicked up you want to have a mask it's really sad and it's really a shame and you know we can go off all day about why these fires are happening you know and everyone has different theories and stuff like that but me as a builder I look at solutions I look at okay maybe the fires are starting because of this reason maybe they're starting because of that Let's look at ways to protect our homes, to try to build them better, build them stronger. Let's make them, you know, be able to withstand fires, earthquakes, mudslides, hurricanes. We need to start connecting with the earth a lot better as human beings living on this planet. We need to start connecting with our um, building materials, connecting with where we're at, how we're going to build a structure. And I know we do a lot. And a lot of people don't realize that, but a lot of building safety and stuff like that, that's really what they try to do. I feel like we need to do way more. These houses, the way they're being built so close to each other, one house lights on fire, it just burns down the next. And that's crazy. If they're spread apart a little further, if they're, um, you know, everything's a little bit, has more room to breathe, the fires might not spread as easy. And of course, that's easy to say, but when there's so many people and the demand is high, then they're going to build structures because people need structures. It's just, I feel we need to change our building codes and change the way we build houses and everything a lot more and a lot better than what we're doing to have a safer future. Because I hear it's just getting warmer and warmer, that this summer is going to be warmer than it was last summer, and that there may be more fires and everything and it's crazy because every year I'm noticing it's more and more and more and more fires. You see that right there, that car completely just lit on fire and you see those, they look like arrows, right? Those actually the rims that melted off the car and it created that effect. It almost looks like arrows. A little creepy to me when I first saw that, but yeah, that's what it is. There's another shot coming up here. You see that right there? The rims completely melted and just dribbled down the street like it was liquid. That's how hot, that's how hot this fire was. And when you have wind blowing, wind blowing, wind blowing, it's almost like a kiln. Like, it's just so much wind blowing and the flames just so hard coming up the hill just keep going and you have all this fuel houses 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 it'll catch metal on fire it'll catch everything on fire 
A lot of people think that metal can't catch on fire. Oh, yes, it does. And once it catches on fire, it's a lot harder to put out. But you see that right there? Look. Boom. Crazy. That's a rim melted. So like I say, I'm not a fire specialist or anything like that. I'm just a builder. But please, look into some building codes. Call building and safety. Um, Google it. Check out where you're zoned. And there may be things you can do to protect your homes from these really devastating fires, okay? And one other really important thing is always have a plan. Always have a plan of escape. If you live in an area that has a lot of fires, then please have a plan of escape. Know your ev uh, uh, evacuation routes. Make sure you're ready to go if something happens, okay? To protect yourself and all your loved ones. All right, so hey, I hope you all enjoyed this video. We appreciate you all. Please subscribe to our channel and um, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment, all right? We appreciate you all again. Like I said, stay safe out there and uh, watch your backs, everybody. Keep yourself safe, going for out, peace.